This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Let me know once you guys are able to see my screen. Is my screen visible? visible? Yeah, yeah, yeah fine. Visible. Thank you. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. So we will be discussing about uh, the performance testing using LoadRunner tool for the upcoming sessions. So the main agenda of our uh, demo session today is here we are going to discuss about what is performance testing and the performance testing lifecycle and mainly the one of the important tool which is LoadRunner that's architecture and course content followed by Q&A session, okay? So first, whatever may be the work, while we are learning something, we need to question ourselves with these four questions. What, why, when, and how? So whenever we are discussing about performance testing, in a simple four steps, we will come to one clear picture on what is performance testing here. Okay, so I'm going to write it here. Performance testing. Okay. What do you mean by performance testing? Anyone have idea on this? What exactly mean performance testing? Anyone from the team? Fine, no worries. So the name itself says it is going to test the performance of any application whenever we are using with peak load. So it can be defined as testing the application with peak load. Some might be knowing the term. Ma'am, can you increase the font size? Yeah, sure, sure. Is this fine? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, fine, cool. So, suppose let us take uh, the live application which is a railway, IRCTC. So we, if we are doing performance testing in this sense, the main objective is to check the application with peak load. Load in this sense, nothing but users. So we are all users. So whenever someone from our team, so let's take like we are around 20 people who are uh, using the IRCTC. So by using this application, we are going to check the application behavior, how it is responding. What is like how fast the application is responding, how stable it is. So all these can be considered under performance testing. So we can simply say testing the application behavior whenever we are hitting the application with max or peak load. Okay. And someone used to ask like why we need performance testing? Can't we able to handle our application without performance? Of course. We can go ahead without performance, but the main issue what we are going to see in the future is defects. Okay, suppose as usual, IRCTC, we are using the application and whenever the 20 logins generated, it is not going to respond for the next upcoming users, which is nothing but defect. Okay, all these needs to be considered and these uh, metrics can be considered under performance testing. So in order to see the defect free in production. So in order to see the defect free in production, we definitely need performance testing. So with this word, you can came to an, like a one conclusion that no application without performance testing can be moved to production. Production in the sense nothing but whenever like we are just going and uh, using our mobiles and we'll just click on play store and whenever we are able to download any application in the sense that seems the application is in production. Production is nothing but the applications what are all used by the customers. 
one can able to open the play store and able to download the irctc right that is nothing but the application is in production okay clear on this what and why yeah it's clear okay fine so the next point is when we need performance testing suppose everything uh, we entered into one of the project let's take irctc so we were in a very confusion state whenever we are uh, starting our application when our work will get started and when we need to start that and this and all these things so for the basic understanding for the users or uh, the performance testers we can say like whenever the application development completes or whenever the application development is in progress we can able to start up performance testing so without the like if i want to do something here irctc.com okay okay this is our client so if i want to do a performance testing for this application definitely we need this ui right so without this url and without seeing all these uh, functionality here no one can able to do any testing so this needs to be completed with its development phase a developer can able to develop the application so once the development completes and manual phase completes manual testing in the sense that i hope few of you people were aware of it so if not that is also fine one sec sorry yeah i am seeing the stock market here so if i click on stock market i'm uh, like uh, if when i'm hover uh, my mouse over here i'm seeing those two options here about us is going to give something related to uh, i mean board of directors and uh, the history about irctc something like that if you want to log in so somewhere we will be seeing the login irctc login if i want to book ticket i need to check first i need to log into this functionality and then i need to check from either from sikintrabat who will go with any place like vishakhapatnam so whenever we are uh, like checking each and every functionality is working or not if i am giving sikindrabad it is taking sikindrabad or not if i am giving vizag here visakhapatnam here it is taking or not if i am changing the date whether the i mean uh, this uh, functionality is changing or not if i need to go and uh, book ac ticket or any some sort of uh, one tier two tier three tier so all these functionality is working or not that comes under the functionality testing phase they are going to check each and every functionality in the application is working or not so one can able to do performance testing whenever the complete application is developed on the manual phase which is nothing but the functional phase of the application is completed then we can able to do performance testing but as now we were in completely into agile methodology like we will be getting like frequent uh, deployments frequent changes and even without completion of this development whenever there is only the login functionality developed we can able to start work for that whenever register functionality is work, is uh, completed in its development phase we can able to start working on that we no need to wait till the entire application is completely developed whenever there is a, like split wise functionality wise development is done we can go ahead and start the performance testing okay but the opening criteria i mean the entry criteria in order to do the performance testing is application development should be completed and also manual phase should be done and the main thing is application should be stable okay so whenever we are uh, checking for the second rabat whenever it is giving 
sort of tirupati which is not at all acceptable so it means there is some defects with this application so in that case we can't go ahead and do the function i mean performance testing okay whenever i am trying to change the class it is only giving all classes that's it there is no one tier even if it is there it is not opting we are unable to opt one tier two tier three tier and all these things so then also we can directly say to our client the application itself is not stable so we are not willing to go ahead with performance testing that should be our main criteria okay and now now we know what is performance and why we need performance why we need means in order to see the defect free in production okay when we need so application should complete its development phase and also the application should be stable and it should be completed with its functional phase which is manual okay fine how we are going to achieve the performance testing that's the main thing okay so here we will be having few tools okay so the mostly and widely used tool is load runner and the next is jmeter new load a6 okay something like that we are having n number of tools to do performance testing but the most commonly used whenever you heard about the performance testing the most commonly used tool will be load runner will comes into the first place and this is purely licensed one okay so here when like we can also able to download it but it will be applicable only for the 50 users with trial version and never like if we want to go and check irctc of uh, with uh, like around 100 users we can't go ahead it can support only 50 users if you are crossing beyond the 50th user whenever you are like planning to play with 51st user then it will ask you for license okay we need to buy license for that and jmeter is completely open source one the word open source itself says one can easily download so i can easily go to my chrome and will simply write like jmeter download so i can directly download from the chrome here itself and here i can able to go ahead with n number of users it's not only limited with 50 users so we can able to run with approx 400 users okay you can also go beyond the line but there some configurations needs to be set up which is called master slave configuration that configuration need to set up in your machine okay and we also have the another tool which is neolord that is also a licensed one and k6 is also licensed and epica is also licensed one so here we are having n number of tools and why only load runner because it is as it is from the ages so most of the performance testing projects will rely on load runner if you take any banking project any banking project it might be wells fargo westpac bank of america like most of the most of the banking projects will completely rely on load runner because as it is a licensed one the report which we are getting from the load runner will be of very efficient mode so whenever we are having any issues in our tool itself we can directly contact to our load runner support team in order to solve any sort of issues okay so these are the different types of tools we are having so all clear with what is performance and why we need when we are going to handle the performance and how we are going to achieve it everyone clear about these four questions yes ma'am yes. cool hello okay. yes hello ma'am 
So could you please uh, explain what is a spike? Okay. I mean, you are talking about the spike testing, right? Yeah, volume of spike and okay. what is a scalability? Fine. Yeah. Fine. The word itself says spike. Spike in the sense, you can you consider the term as sudden increase? Yes, right. The spike in the yes, sense, yes. when when whenever you are using the load, let us take you are testing the application with hundred users, but you want to check your application whether if the number of users are getting increased, the concurrency rate is getting increased, how your server is gonna to respond. Then we can consider that as spike test. So I'll I'll draw it for you. Uh, you are able to see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, 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 fine. So let us consider this is time. Okay, I'm just uh, let us consider this is one application and we are running over there and we are using this application. So, number of users are getting increased, and I just asked to test for 100 users okay consider this as the term will be called as ramp up okay so it is nothing but all ramp the up, users yeah. are yeah all the users are getting initialized into our application okay i'm just asking my machine to check my application is suitable for one hour or not so i'm just uh, like designing my scenario to work for one user in a steady state with those 100 users but my requirement is to check whether the server is good to handle the spike test. So what I'm doing is after like around 45 minutes of duration, I am directly asking my system to increase 50 more users. So how comes 100 plus 50? So now in from the 46th second, okay, it is gonna to handle with 150 users the sudden spike the sudden spike in the application is gonna to check how the server is responding so the spike testing can be like um, defined as to check the application whenever there is some sort of abnormalities that if there is any abnormal because this is nothing but abnormal only right so 100 users is normal we are just pushing our machines to go to the spike and asking our system like whether everything is safe in that particular situation or not. So this is nothing but spike. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Okay. By considering these four questions, I believe you can understand exactly what is performance testing. Fine. Now we are moving to the second one, life cycle. Okay. So, okay, we all learned performance testing and we just entered into any of the organization and uh, our project manager just uh, like called us and asked a few of the questions, what is so and so, we answered everything. Okay, that's fine. And uh, he said like, uh, okay, from today you are going to start your performance testing project. Okay, then our very first step, what we need to do is to get the non-functional requirements whatever the project on which project we are getting we need to get this document okay as we are considering railways application so we'll uh, like uh, we'll take that as reference and we'll uh, discuss something on non-functional requirements okay i'll uh, just tell you in another few minutes once we are done with requirements okay so then what we are going to do is like first we need to set up a call with our IRCTC uh, like uh, stakeholder and we'll discuss. Uh, so we are having so and so questions regarding to that so and so blah blah blah. We'll be asking about the questionnaire documents. Whatever the discussion happened so far in our very first call that is going to be documented as test plan. Okay. 
so whatever the discussion and what are all the terms and what are all the conditions we like discussed in the very first step that is documented here and we will take like a sign off for this test plan so why we need we already discussed with our client uh, the uh, railway minister and i mean uh, the one who is working for the irctc stakeholder we already discussed why can't we directly go and uh, do the performance in the sense suppose in my first discussion my client is saying like uh, okay fine let's take uh, i think vikram is here like okay hi vikram so let's plan with 1000 users for irctc so this is what uh, i convey to him i am the client and uh, vikram is the one who is working as a performance tester or someone and you all into the performance team i just asked you to do performance so what you guys will do so you guys will directly move to this uh, application and you start using the load runner and uh, doing all the scripts and uh, doing that and this okay and also you prepared i mean you did some executions and uh, you prepared documents and come to me and saying like amulya we are done with our uh, like a performance testing here is our report that time like there might be some time gap happened so in my mind what i'm thinking is like i'm not willing to go ahead with 1000 users so now i am going to increase my hardware resources and all the things and now i am planning to go ahead with 5000 users then whatever the efforts... hey, can i ask one question please yes yeah, actually uh, sometimes what happen that uh, in our environment it's working as when we toast uh, test the load testing and it's working fine but uh, during the patch deployment in the production there might be yeah. some temporary file is there okay yeah and there some cache cache uh, might be uh, some uh, in relevant cache are there and at uh, that time uh, client faced the challenges that uh, like page uh, uh, loading so how can we yes. overcome uh, and we can test uh, accordingly on that could you please elaborate really, okay that's really a very good question so in the tool itself whatever we are having so here we are having the cache option as well so there will be few runtime settings whenever we are running the script so we need to consider the cache as well so we won't allow the cache to impact our responses so whenever i am trying to log in my gmail something like that okay so when i'm were uh, not a login so whenever i am surfing something like this for the very first time it is going to take very bit long time in order to load this okay so whenever it is already yes. loaded so there will be everything will be loaded under cache so whenever i am using this for the second time the response time will gets reduced okay so for all yeah. these issues we are going to implement the cache as well which is which should not impact our response times then how can we define okay. that uh, might be a uh, cache size or what types of cache we have so is there any particular uh, options that we might be uh, enter the cache size for the uh, in the uh, relative between uh, mb and uh, mb accordingly like yes. uh, 20 temporary Definitely. 20 mba yes yeah. Definitely. so is that uh, proceed so, okay okay cool okay, okay so, go ahead, please yeah cool so in for the same reason we will be having the thing called text check okay text check will be there so the name itself says it is going to check whether whatever we are applying for the script that is going to work or not by using this check verifications he, this is also called as verification points so we can use these points and will directly tell to our system if it is crossing this much of mb then push me some sort of pop up something like that everything that whatever we are discussing that is going to be handled in our scripting part we can take care of each and everything okay
Am I good to go now? Yes, please. Yeah, fine. So whatever we discussed with our client, so we'll be designing a test plan. So sorry, we dropped at some point, right? So we like uh, discussed to go ahead with 1000, but now I'm just changing my word as per my new requirements. I'm saying like, we'll go with 5000. So if I'm directly changing my word from 1000 to 5000, what are all the works and uh, I mean the things that done from our entire team is going to waste. The resource utilization, everything is going to be zero. For the same sake, the performance test plan will play a very key role in our performance testing. If the performance testing, I mean uh, the test plan gets signed off in the sense no one has ability to change their word no matter what if they need to go ahead with any modifications then again the next version of test plan should be developed and that should be signed off from the client okay so for all these reasons we need definitely need test plan to get be signed off okay once that is signed off, we'll uh, check using the load runner. We can able to design the scripts. Coming to the scripting. Scripting in the sense everyone will think of having the coding knowledge and all this and that, this and that, that all, everything will comes into our mind. And even the people who attended the session also like they were a little bit worried whether they are going to handle this or not. But believe me, there will be like no coding knowledge required as a prerequisite i'm having like around nine plus years of experience till now i never used any code if you want to use any code also you can able to build it so here in this sessions we are going to cover the basic c programming as well performance testing won't need much coding so whatever we have the tools the tools can be able to like record what are all the things we need and that needs a sort of uh, modifications which all comes under scripting that will be fine for our script creation okay so script creation i'll just give you a brief uh, introduction on this script creation so whenever i use uh, my loader tool i'll just navigate to this page page and then i click on login and then I just uh, give my username and password and followed by capture and click on sign in. So whenever I do these actions from my, in, I mean, from my machine, that itself is going to generate the script. Okay. This is how it's, it looks. You no need to worry. I'm going to explain you each and everything in detail. This is uh, one web tools application which is open source so here what i did is like in the very first step i just navigated to that page and then provided one username and here i just provided one password and then clicked on login and at last i clicked on sign off button so on what area we are playing in the application this load runner itself is going to give you a very clear picture without any confusions it is of very simple language okay so here what we'll do is like we'll do what are all the required changes so here you are seeing only one username and one password if I want to run the same script for 1000 users, what I'll do is like, I'll just give test data of required users. Ma'am, sorry I to mean, interrupt you. Hello? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, a session has been recorded, ma'am. Yes, yes. We do. Ma'am, could you please send me that? Actually, I'm leaving yeah, the sure, session. Sure. It's very, very, very wonderful session you have explained. And I'm very much interested on that, but uh, right now I am traveling, so not able to continue, ma'am. So, yeah, so sorry, actually. And okay. could you please send me not that session, please? Sure, okay, sure, thank, sure. You. Thank, you sure. thank you. Thank you for the explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
okay so here we will be using if suppose let us take if i'm working on any banking application so it is sort of sbi then i don't want uh, like uh, then being as a sbi client i don't want all the users like repetitive users so what i'll do i'll just go for unique users so i will be giving thousand users names and thousand passwords to check whether my sbi application is able to handle those unique sessions as well okay all these things can be considered into our scripting part okay once our scripting is done we will be moving to the execution and then we will be discussing about our reports so here we will be considering about n number of metrics like whenever you are clicking on login how much time exactly it is taking okay whenever you are click if i mean trying to place order or whenever you are trying to book ticket how much time it is taking and whenever you are trying to cancel your ticket how much time you are taking so all these things will be considered mainly the i mean uh, one of the main metric is response time response time can be defined as the time taken by the server to respond for the request okay so here what i am doing i am just clicking on something and giving some password and i am giving some captcha and clicking on sign in it is not going to take the time for this the time for this and all these things so after giving all these details how much time this application is going to take when you click on sign in whenever you click on sign in what internally happens so we provided some abc as username and 1234 is our password and i provided the captcha when i click on sign in what it will do is like this whatever we are seeing this is nothing but application okay so this application server will internally connect to database okay so it is going to directly check whether abc username is present or not okay if it got uh, the correct answer then it is going to check 1234 is the correct password or not so after these two things it is going to check whatever the captcha we provided over there it is correct or not and then it is entry to the application so here it is going to captcha how much time it is taking that is one of the main metric for performance testing okay so and this let's discuss about uh, non functional requirements okay so today we'll discuss not much into this i don't want you to going to long i'll simply write nfr okay so it will be some sort of questionnaire documents whatever the company you are working for each and every organization there will be some sort of standard documents you no need to worry but you need to be aware Excuse me, what are all the things yes please yeah i have one question so uh, you yeah. said in the script if we have the 100 users then we do we need to give username and password for the 100 users yes in the script okay it it is nothing just like uh, i mean it depends on the client requirement if your client hmm. is able to accept the duplicate duplications as well then you can go ahead with 10 users for 10 repetitive times hmm okay or otherwise we will have to create it's, all it's the users very, very it's very simple thing okay. i think my screen is already visible right hmm yes so what i am going to do is like So anyhow, we will be getting our uh, test data from the client itself. So what I'll do is like I'll just give username, user one. So we will be writing. Suppose mm -hmm. let us take if you are asking about hundred, right? So if mm -hmm. it is like two seventy, we will be like uh, adding all these things and converting this. X this is Excel, right? We will be converting and saving this as. csv comma separated value okay 
that's it username Save. so what i'll do is like i'll go to my script okay instead of this i'll directly add my file over here mm -hmm. that comes under parameters so here i need to add my parameterization and i need to browse my file and also need to tell my system how this is gonna to take and if i am using for the second user is that should be sequential or it should be unique or you can also go ahead with random values as well right mm -hmm. so we need to go with some sort of small changes in this page that's it okay okay thank okay. you yeah 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 ma'am uh, this parameter list that you were showing this is like uh, mm -hmm. coming from the tool yeah from the tool itself we are having that inside the tool so what i'm i'll just quickly share you you might not get complete picture but see replace with parameter when i'm like double clicking on this and right click replace with new parameter create new parameter i'll be giving like username okay and anyhow this is file only i'm clicking on okay do you want to replace yes okay so if i click okay. on parameters over here that is already created see so what i'll do is like i'll just browse username dot that so i'll just browse over here sorry i think it's there in our desktop where i saved it okay um that's i don't know exactly I... where i saved yeah a problem so if not you can a... also directly directly you can click on edit with notepad you can if you are if you want to check only with five users you can directly write like this user three user four user five that's it and you need to click on save and then close i didn't click on save that's the reason why it is not populating here okay and there is no programming language uh, knowledge is required for this this is like coming from the recording the yes. ui recorder that we have and that ui recorder is also part of this tool yes everything everything is included inside the tool itself okay so that ui recorder okay. itself gets uh, the script file and there is only one file that is re required uh, which comes from the recorder itself yeah So okay. tomorrow we yes. will be uh, discussing on this tool so that I can able to help you on how to record on that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Meanwhile, Please we go. need to complete the other part as well. So I'm just uh, discussing on that. Please any any more Thanks. questions? Any questions? Yeah, ma'am. I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you mentioned the term while you were explaining some phases like non-functional requirement and test plan. You told yeah. hardware changes. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Is it something hardware sizing and what you mean the same? If, and if okay. that is the case, what it is and when do we, is it in the test planning phase or like when exactly are we using this? Okay. So for the better understanding, I'll just go with in terms of non-technical work here. Okay. You need to fill two liters of water but you are having one liter water bottle. So what you are gonna to do after filling your one liter, I mean, in your water bottle, then the next step is we are gonna to take another water bottle, which is of empty. So in the same way, hardware resource, what I am like uh, pointing here is that relates to the RAM size and also the CPU utilizations and each and everything, memory, everything. Clear? Okay. Okay, so what exactly uh, you change it? So first you use half part or whatever is there with us and then uh, you oh. extend that? Yes. So here what we are going to do is like in your system, if your C folder or D folder is completely getting occupied, then your uh, file explorer is going to turn a bit red and then your mm -hmm. starting will get slow. And mm -hmm. what that means, there is no space for new options or new folder creations and everything like that. Okay. 
then what you'll do we'll just increase our ram size which yeah. is and also i mean the memory space as well which is going to speed up and boost up your work yes okay yeah so in real and life you do it actually on the on your own local machine yes here we will be having lgs here that is called as load generators so if you want to run 100 users then you might need one lg but whenever you are planning to run for n number of users like let's take 500 users then definitely whatever the load one generator you are having that might not be enough because of uh, all these hardware constraints then definitely you need more lgs okay clear okay yeah thank you thank you yeah fine so i think we are having only 15 minutes left okay fine so if needed i can cover these two topics tomorrow meanwhile i just want to complete this in high priority today that is load runner architecture so whatever the things we discussed so far that comes under performance and now coming to the load runner architecture it's very very simple so as i said like after creation of nfr and doing test plan we will be doing script generation and execution and analysis correct so for these three steps step 3 4 and 5 these two comes under just like word document this is nothing but documentation work so our work mainly starts from here 1 2 3 for these three things we are having three different components one is vu gen virtual user generator this is the place where we are using n number of users and this is mainly used for scripting if you can if, if you guys able to see my screen this is nothing but vu gen see virtual user generator so by using this we are just generating our script okay and whatever the script we are doing in our first component we are going to execute the same in our second component which is nothing but controller so here i am just creating my script and i am doing modifications and adding those users and i am trying to run so someone asked about this spike test so what type of test we need to execute that all can be designed here there will be n number of test load testing spike testing endurance testing benchmark testing okay so all these testings can be designed here stress testing will also be there okay what are all the things we performed so far here that can be analyzed in analysis this is the third component so this is the place you guys used to script and this is the place where we will be doing execution and this is the place for our analysis our report in order to generate the required amount of load so i already said what is performance testing in the sense i said like testing the application behavior when we are hitting with peak load load is nothing but users so those users will be generated from the load generator okay this is going to provide us required amount of load without this load runner also we can able to you guys um, might get confused like uh, if we definitely need uh, like sort of uh, a tool like this why can't we directly go and uh, check the load runner if we are running with uh, 10 users something like that so in that case we will just uh, discuss this with in a very simple way so let us take we are like around 20 people okay so what i am doing is like we just want to check how much time it is taking for in functionality in irctc application okay so then what i need to do if i am not using any load runner tool any jmeter tool or any performance testing tool what i'll do i'll just uh, stand in front of you and i'll ask you to sit um, in in a line and i i just need you people to arrange uh, 20 computers in order to log in and i'll announce okay guys you can type abc1 for the first user abc2 for the second user and abc3 for the third user likewise abc20 is your username for the 20th user and password will be the same okay then i am just asking you to people okay guys you can 
go ahead with username then you people are giving abc 1 2 3 4 followed by 20 and now i am asking you people okay guys if you are done with ab like username then go ahead with password and then everyone is going to type 1 2 3 4 and then i am just asking you people to give your capture then everyone did then okay guys i am going to spell 1 2 and 3 by the end of 3 you need to click on sign in button okay i am spelling 1 2 3 okay so do you really think is this going to help because whenever we are doing something there will be n number of human errors the reason why we consider like this because uh, priyanka is like whenever i am asking her to click on sign in she might not uh, listen like she is clicking two minutes like uh, delay and the one amit is like clicking on sign in two minutes prior to my suggestion so there will be n and n number of human errors to get rid of all these things whatever we do manually to get the response time is of just like wasting our time because it no one can use like like can work like a machine we need to get the concurrency as well so everyone like in few of the application they will mainly con concentrate on concurrent users concurrent users are nothing but whenever all the users all the required amount of users are in the same page so they need to click on sign in in the very like fraction of seconds everyone needs to be on very same page so by taking all these considerations this definitely needs some sort of automation tool okay this is the load runner architecture fine and uh, moving to the course content what are all uh, the things we are going uh, to learn this okay uh, i had uh, one question on this architecture like uh, the very first item says view generator that is virtual user generators yes. why it is view generator and not actual users like uh, why do you, uh, like is it like we have to test only with virtual users or is it like the real time um, uh, application login users that we can use for performing it the is, test it is nothing but real time users only right so okay. i mean whatever the data production data they like if we are working for sbi so is sbi going to give us some sort of real data amit username and password no right mm -hmm. amit username and password is completely confidential so here we are just using those real time users in, in terms of virtual users by taking credentials but whatever the confidential matter is there that should be in production only so we don't have any thing i mean uh, any ability to touch the prod data so we will be playing only with the pre-production data which is directly replicating the production data okay sure thanks okay yeah and uh, here I'll just show you what are all the things we are going to learn in our uh, things. So, so I just gave you a brief uh, description on what is performance testing and why we need, how we need, and uh, like what all we need. Okay. So after completion of this introduction, so we will be moving to the load runner tool, automated tool and we'll be discussing on how to install it and what are all the components what we discussed uh, so far and also in this you guys are gonna to generate the scripts okay and uh, you are gonna to play with the, those uh, scripts by adding uh, n number of necessary things and also what are all the different types of runtime settings someone just asked me like how to apply the, i mean when how we are going to handle the cache if you are gonna to like include that cache, then definitely whatever the response time we are seeing is not at all the correct one. So we need to take care of the cache as well. So all those things will be consider considered in our uh, runtime settings. And also here you guys no need to worry. So I'm gonna to like help you on C language basics as well, because in few of the interviews, they will be asking about uh, 
few things related uh, i mean even in the load runner if i mean the project requires definitely we need to write like in ta in to be something like that so we also going to discuss all those things as this is load runner it is load runner lr okay the short form is lr so here we will be having some inbuilt functions so we will be discussing those as well and also some things related uh, to advanced c topics okay so this is a correlation so i can simply say like uh, whenever we log in into any someone asked about s i mean we discussed about sba okay whenever you you provided your username and password definitely you will be getting one otp okay so i can't directly go and uh, use the same otp for uh, all the thousand users on what i need to run so if consider this as a sbi project definitely when you click on username and password there will be some sort of uh, i mean here you can see like session ids okay so consider this as otp for your sbi application if i'm using with the 10 different users 10 different passwords this also will be like 10 different otps right so it can't directly we can't directly go and uh, blindly use the same password for all the users so in order to handle this type of session ids whatever that is generated from the server okay that is going to be taken care by correlation part and we do have automated correlation and also manual correlation so we are also going to discuss about that and parameterization so parameterization i just simply said so to provide different usernames and different passwords whenever we are running with the different and multiple users that terms and that comes under parameterization so we will be having different combinations here we uh, observed right so different combinations in the sense how the next user is going to be is that going to be sequential or the next user should go random or if it is a banking application definitely they need some sort of unit so all these things can be considered under parameterization so whenever we are done with our scripting our next component is controller okay so we will be designing our script so load i mean load uh, testing and the scalability testing and endurance testing and n number of different types of scenarios we are going to design here okay and also we are going to see at the detailed analysis detailed analysis we are going to check each and every metrics over there how the response time is and how the 90 percentile is and how i mean uh, how about uh, um the response codes everything is 200 or uh, some giving any errors like 400 or 500 status codes something like that or in our analysis if we are doing uh, like uh, with uh, peak load whether we are seeing any issues so those also will be issues in the sense here it is termed as bottlenecks okay we are also going to cover about this and this is lre so this is nothing but controller only but uh, this is some re something related to cloud so whereas in controller i mean the component what i showed you there we can able to run only one script at a time by using the lre we can also able to run multiple scripts if someone wants to do two to three i mean uh, types of testing parallelly yes they can able to go ahead okay and also all these and i am also going to help you how to generate the report and how to collide all the metrics and how to write our observations each and everything results generation drafting emails along with all the observations okay and if you people are really interested i can also help you people in the interview questions as well if needed i am ready to take mock calls as well and here we are also having the bonus topics like fiddler if here i am using the load runner correct for recording vugen if the vugen is unable to support the application on which i need to work if railway application is unable to compatible with this then i can't simply sit and do something else so we are having another tool which is called fiddler so from there we can able to generate the script and pull that request into here and here i am going to convert that fiddler script into vugen script okay 
whenever we are having uh, i mean here we are not only dealing with performance testing we are also dealing with performance engineering so whenever you are facing issues in your analysis issues in your execution then the term moved from performance testing to performance engineering engineering is going to deal you about the bottlenecks which is nothing but issues so if you are like able to see any issues then definitely you need some sort of monitoring tools so here we are uh, going to discuss any one of this either app dynamics or dynatris because we can't install those uh, two at a time in one machine and we are also going to discuss about a bit high topic which is garbage collection as well so these are all the things we are going to cover in our load runner upcoming sessions and uh, i'm pretty sure like if you guys are really interested i mean if you give a commitment of minimum of 2 hours per day then you guys are going to do this within 30 to 35 days if you want to really switch from your uh, i mean one department to another department one technology to another then this is uh, the right time for you people because this don't need much coding and uh, very high time and all these things but this needs a clear understanding of what you are doing i mean whenever you are doing something just not only about this i'm speaking whenever you are doing something just try to have all these consolidated things then it will be very easy for you to learn okay so tomorrow i am going to start the main sessions which i mean uh, we will be discussing on non functional requirements because of uh, like uh, the time constraint uh, we didn't get a chance to complete this non functional requirements non functional requirements i'll just simply tell you in 2 minutes okay suppose let us uh, take i am working into any of the project okay anjali or anand i'm uh, like uh, let us take uh, all we are all working into one project so amit is our client so there i'm directly posting few questions to amit uh, yeah hi amit uh, whatever the iscTC application are we considering is it already existing or that's a new one so he is going to give us some details and i am going to ask like uh, like uh, exactly from which technology it is derived is this java or dot net or java scripting something like that and uh, what are all um, the components you are uh, concentrating are you concentrating only on ticket booking or you are also concentrating in irctc we used to see right so there it they are already included flight tickets air i mean sorry nothing but air tickets and uh, we have cabs and uh, food delivery options we'll be having all those things so as we were seeing each and everything in our application we are just uh, getting confirmation from amit amit are we going to like uh, check each and every module or as uh, the time limit is uh, like uh, we are having like around one month of time to get this release so do we really need to go ahead with all these uh, things or mainly our concentration is into only the ticket booking okay and if we have any issues in our executions is this railway application is deployed to any monitoring tool do we have dynatrace or do we have app dynamics or do we have new relic in order to check all the production logs or do we have any sla like whenever you click on like login is that for two seconds or three seconds okay whenever you click on uh, like uh, uh, ticket booking from to and followed by date and everything whenever you are paying is your payment is going to take like two seconds three seconds that is called sla service level agreement that should be like provided from our client okay how much how much uh, users you are planning to run to check the railway is that for thousand or two thousand we also need to check all these things in picture that comes under non-functional requirements so we will be discussing that complete uh, detailed topic tomorrow okay guys any ma'am one more question yeah before uh, we yeah. wind up ma'am so yeah. um, nowadays we follow agile everywhere right so in performance yes. testing uh, why are we still talking about test plan test design and test execution because i think in agile uh, in what do you mean exactly by agile any idea uh, like we get user stories right 
Yeah. Okay. So in a jail. So that yeah, that only not relates to earlier. We used to follow some sort of waterfall methodology in our testing. Okay. So I'll uh, tell you in detail. So waterfall, waterfall. Like once the requirement is captured, mm -hmm. I mean is done. The very first phase is completed. We can't uh, go back and change the requirements because that is limited to there is a limitation for the waterfall. Even if you see the waterfall, water is falling from top to bottom that can't be reversed, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the terminology is also taken from the same understanding. So the agile methodology here includes there will be continuous requirements. So whenever you need that is going to give you a proper uh, communication between you performance tester and developer and manual tester and everyone if the developer wants to change okay okay guys i don't want to give the login functionality right now so first i'll go with i'm sorry i don't want to give the registration functionality right now so we'll just go with guest users so i'm not going to plan to develop the sign in functionality for i mean for registered users we'll just click on directly the one which we are having for the guest user so then we'll directly go and change uh, the things accordingly. Okay, yeah. the test plan exactly why we need is it is just like an agreement between you and client. Because mm -hmm. uh, some other day they can't uh, come back to you and ask like uh, Priyanka, I asked you for uh, uh, 1000 users why you did only for the 500 users. So the result what we uh, got from your company is of no use, which is a completely loss of billing correct yeah. so those two are like the basic things what we need to do while doing performance testing as a part of performance testing life cycle yeah but don't we follow agile there i mean because in manual testing we usually get user i mean we have we get user, user stories, stories. Right? yeah you know i think on the jira board we yes. get all those details so likewise yeah. in performance how does that work like okay. user stories if you are those. okay fine so whatever the user story you are creating over there so if you use any test case okay so what is your test case so launch this application and uh, click on login and uh, give your uh, username give your password and click on capture and uh, click on sign in that will be your one uh, story correct yes, yes so after after completion of your story only i am going to do the uh, test design which is nothing but scripting for the hmm. same sake i said that should be done with manual phase if there is any defects or errors in the very first line then definitely uh, we are not going to do anything right so for the same reason i i suggested to go ahead with performance testing that should be done with manual phase hmm. Okay, if there is any defects, then you'll directly rise in your Jira board saying like uh, uh, even with the wrong password is also application is able to log in. Hmm. Then wh what you'll do, we are not going to do any performance testing for uh, the thing which is unstable. So the thing what we will do is like whatever that is signed off from the development and whatever that is signed off from the manual manual testing phase and whenever the application is stable, then will be good to go ahead with performance phase yeah okay yeah and also in the we don't Zero follow this also, yeah in like jira yeah, even or in something performance, in performance also we will be having okay, okay. we will be just having, like, like, how it like in yeah. testing. okay suppose let us take if yeah. you're seeing any defect there you are going to rise uh, ah, uh, as like anything right so what yeah. here we are going is like if i am seeing any change in my response time so let uh, like as i said as a service level agreement if it is two seconds okay mm. if i'm getting five seconds okay mm. so then okay. the thing is like uh, one second for yeah so then i'm gonna to raise one uh like uh defect, defect over there yeah yeah so uh, actually the SLA is two seconds, but here it is taking five seconds. So here hmm. we need to take that. Okay. Okay. Got okay. it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so and, much. Yeah. This is how yeah. we are going to work. And okay. any more questions, guys? I'm going to start. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
yeah actually uh, i joined lately this session can you forward uh, the session record in the group sure 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 i mean tomorrow morning uh, the manager is uh, going to share this i think now there will be no one to handle this so by tomorrow mm -hmm. morning you guys can able to take this yeah yeah be sure okay thank you ma'am thank you but if you people really need help on any more calls and something like that i am there to help you i just need yeah. no matter what either one or two student in the class i just need my people and to be good at what we were digging and what we were uh, doing in a perfect way yeah yeah sure okay i just need you people to be confident on what you are doing and what you are learning okay any okay. more questions y yes ma'am uh, actually yeah uh hi we know here yeah. as part of this course we we'll like a performance testing and a cloud like a docker or a kubernetes like that uh, for docker and kubernetes we know we are having separate sessions for that because we were limited uh, to like around 30 plus 30 to 35 hours so we do have a separate uh, coaching for that training for that docker and okay. kubernetes okay okay yeah thank you that's with the load on our rg meet a separate course uh i'm not sure and exactly because we can able to do with uh, any tool that is some sort of integrations on what we used to do exactly i'm not sure like uh, now the training is going on which tool okay yeah Thank you. Yeah. Guys, any more um, questions? So I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so you said in the bonus uh, section we have some concepts of performance yes. engineering and monitoring app dynamics, yes. Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. So as a performance yes. te tester, how much performance engineering is needed, and is it like too technical? What exactly? In how much depth we should know? okay and how, is it, it depends, like very technical no not technical not much into technical see if you are like uh, working as a performance tester so in few of the companies there will be separate uh, for engineering so there will be only dedicated people for uh, engineering areas like dynatrace so we will be getting calls for dynatrace admin and app dynamics admin so here what we are going to do is like exactly whenever you are facing any issue with the performance testing scenarios how we are going to deal how we are going to dig your issues and how we are going to post those issues to your client like this is what uh, we did and these are all uh, observations we digged by using uh, so on so monitoring tools no because okay. in one so of the nothing... job yes yes yeah go ahead go ahead uh, so Please in one continue. of the job descriptions of a performance tester i saw it needs performance tester plus uh, like performance sure. engineering skills and someone who can dig deep into the code and do the analysis okay so here the performance engineering what they are referring is like so example as i said so as uh, this is uh, taking uh, sorry 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 as this is uh, taking like around uh, 10 seconds for the login functionality mm -hmm. okay so what you are going to do you just need to check why exactly it is taking 10 seconds right so whenever you log in into any application it is going to tell you so exactly what is causing the login functionality to move from 2 seconds to 10 seconds is there is any bad code happened over there or is something is happening over there we'll just go log in into that app dynamics or any monitoring tool and we will just check exactly which request is causing issue okay whenever you click on log in not only the single request is reaching the server right so whenever you click on login you need to provide the username you need to provide the password and also you need to provide the captcha so all these requests is going to move to db so you also need to check whether the response from the db is getting delayed okay all these things will be taken into consideration while checking about 
performance monitoring so that is also not a very vast subject so whenever you are applying for jobs it, you just need like how much cpu consumption is there like is the response time what we are seeing from 2 seconds to 10 seconds is that because of the hardware someone asked about the hardware right whenever like our uh, file explorer is completely occupied then whenever you are trying to copy any folder or something it will take definitely long time right so what might be the reason behind that because of limited insufficient storage which is here the technically it is called as like uh, resource resource utilization issues hardware resource utilization issues the cpu consumption mm -hmm. is high or the memory consumption is high we'll just go there and log into that application and when we click on the transactions so definitely we used to find like why and which request is taking long time we'll just take that screenshot and share it to the related team hi guys we find this observation this is what uh, uh, and this is why we are uh, seeing 10 seconds instead of two seconds so please uh, uh, do the changes from your end so this so is we are just gonna to find and share yes we are just gonna to check the issue and share it to the related team that's it because we are not developers to like uh, do the code changes right we'll just identify the bottleneck and if there is anything that can be done from our side we'll do if not we'll just make a screenshot and share it to the related team that's it okay okay